Satan has one main tool to achieve his objective, and it is deception. And always in all prophecies relating to the end of the age, we are warned against being deceived. And I would say furthermore that his deception is going to take a specific form. Bear in mind his object is to get a certain man worshipped as God. So he needs as his tool of deception a philosophy that deifies man. You know what I mean by deify? That makes man his own God. And I would say in essence that's the spirit in secular humanism. It, what secular humanism is aiming at is making man his own God. It's not saying it in so many words at the moment in most cases, but ultimately that's where it's headed. <coughs> we don't want any interference from any other supreme being. We don't need religion. We can handle our own problem. And that's the essence of this spirit and the essence of this philosophy. It's man making himself God. And there's something very interesting here. It may not appeal to any of the rest of you, but it appeals to me because of my background. I want to turn to Zechariah chapter 9 for a moment. Verse 13. Now, the Lord is talking about what he's going to do at the close of this age, and I'm just going to pick out one phrase. When I shall have bent Judah for me and filled the bow with Ephraim. Now, that's a picturesque figure. It speaks about the restoration of the two kingdoms that were scattered in exile, Judah the southern kingdom, Ephraim the northern kingdom, and God speaks about the time when they were going to come his weapons of war. Judah will be the bow, Ephraim will be the arrow that will be put in the bow. And this is in line with the prophecies of uh, Ezekiel 37 where the Lord speaks about restoring the two kingdoms as one nation. And then it says, and raised up thy sons, O Zion, against thy sons, O Greece. Now, for many of you that may not have much significance. For me it has tremendous significance. There's going to come a time when the stream that comes out of Zion will be in opposition to the stream that comes out of Greece. And why I'm interested is because my field, when I was a professor at Cambridge University was Greek philosophy and I studied that for many years I studied it in great detail my primary uh, object of study was the philosophy of Plato and just because I'm entitled to say this I've read every word that Plato ever wrote in the original language and that's a great many words and I wrote my dissertation for a fellowship on the evolution of Plato's method of definition. So all I want to say is this is a field that I have been deeply involved in. And uh, therefore I think I understand in a measure what it means when the sons of Zion are to be raised up against the sons of Greece. Greece is the source of all Western philosophy. And it basically it began around about 600 B.C., and few people that are not familiar with history will know to what extent the concepts and the thoughts of the Western world, that's Europe, the United States, have been molded and influenced by Greek philosophy. And round about the year 600 BC, one of the first Greek philosophers came out with a statement that really sums up this whole thing. His name was Heraclitus. And he said, man is the measure of all things. In other words, man has the ultimate answer. Whatever man measures and however man measures, that's it. And when I started to study the Bible as a philosopher, because I felt it was my philosophic duty to study it, and without any spiritual insight, after a while I realized that I'd moved into a new field. Because that had been my attitude. I'm the measure of all things. Anything I say, any decisions I make, any standards I set, any conclusions I come to, they're valid. The strange thing was when I began to read the Bible, I got the strange impression that not merely was I reading the Bible, but the Bible was reading me. 
And it didn't accept my standards. And for the first time in my life, I was confronted face on with the fact that there's another standard that doesn't bend to man. That isn't impressed by man's intellectual achievements or scientific achievements. And I believe there's a great measure of that in the statement that God will raise up the sons of Zion against the sons of Greece. Because the essence of Hebrew thought is, in the beginning, God. That's the fountain source of all true Hebrew thought and revelation. And so you have this antithesis of in the beginning God and man is the measure of all things. Of course, Greek thought had gods, lots of gods. Convenient gods, pretty gods, clever gods, beautiful gods, very immoral gods, very cruel gods. But they were like little puppets in man's imagination. Man was the ultimate. And I believe you'll find that this is going to be one major aspect of the end time conflict is which philosophy is going to triumph. And in particular, which philosophy is going to rule you. And there's something very, very appealing about the concept that man is the one who knows. His decisions are valid. That's the concept and the philosophy that has moved into the Christian church whereby we set our standards. We don't ask what God has said. We decide what God ought to have said. And if he didn't say it the way we said it, we, we revise it. I'm not saying that's true of this group. We better go back over this so that you get... His supreme motivation is rebellion. His supreme ambition to receive worship. His tool, deception. Through a humanistic philosophy. Derek Prince speaking on Prophecy, titled Evil Forces at the End Time.